Okay, with all of that being said, now let's see if we can do some examples. And like I said, I'm going to start you off slow here. That's why the directions say to list only the amplitude and the period, because I'm not going to give you ones that have a phase shift or a vertical shift right off. I'm going to discuss why there isn't one, but there won't be one in these first four examples. So y equals 2 sine of x. First thing we want to figure out is what the amplitude is. And the amplitude is always given by the number in front of sine or cosine. And so that, in this particular case, is going to be 2. The vertical shift goes along with the amplitude. So I always put it off to the side next to the amplitude. And because you do not see a number being added or subtracted at the end, that tells you that your vertical shift is zero. And the vertical shift always tells me what my midline is. And so my midline here is going to be y is equal to zero. The amplitude then is the distance from that midline to the max and the min. So the distance from zero to the max needs to be two. That means that the upper y coordinate needs to be positive two and the lower y coordinate so that the distance there is also two is going to have to be negative two. So I'm going to go ahead and label those on my graph. The next thing I always find is the period and the definition for period is that it is two pi divided by b where b is the coefficient in front of x. Well, if you look here, this is just sine of x. And so therefore, b is 1, and 2 pi divided by 1 is going to give me 2 pi. Now, the only reason the period is helpful is to find the next thing, which is the x increment. And the x increment formula, remember, is your period divided by 4 which in this particular case will be 2 pi divided by 4, which will reduce 2 pi over 2. Okay, remember, that's going to help me count on the x-axis. But how do I know where to start on the x-axis? That is called the phase shift. And so for the phase shift, what we do is we look at what is after the sign, and we see if there's a plus or minus after the x. And in this case, there's not, and so therefore we know that the phase shift is zero, which means we know that our first x value is zero. So I'm going to go ahead and label that on the x-axis uh, a value of zero. Now, to get to the next x value so that I get five points on the x-axis, I'm going to use the x increment here by adding to my phase shift. And so if you take zero, and add pi over 2, that is going to put you at pi over 2. Then I'm going to add another pi over 2. So 1 pi over 2 plus 1 pi over 2 gives me 2 pi over 2, which reduces to pi. Then add another x increment, which is another pi over 2. So 1 pi plus half of a pi is 1 and a half pi, which needs to be written as 3 pi over 2. And then finally, I need one more point so that I have a total of 5. And so I'm going to add the x increment one more time, which is going to give me 4 pi over 2, which needs to be reduced to 2 pi. Okay, now I am ready to graph the order of the points here. And so I need to look back and notice that I am graphing a sine function. And remember that sine functions start with a zero. So there at my first x value, I'm going to have a zero. At my second x value, I'll have a max. Back to a zero, then to a minimum, finally to a another zero. And so therefore, I'm going to draw the graph very curve-like. Uh, that is going to be horrible. I'm going to try that again. By the way, I am notorious for having horrible sine and cosine graphs. So when you look at the answer key and probably when you see a couple of more problems here in these notes, please do not make fun of me. I would never make fun of you, um, at least to your face. And so just don't worry about if the graph doesn't look real good, but that's actually pretty decent for me. And so um, I would just have to congratulate myself on that really nice graph there. So there's the first example. We're going to keep working these and hopefully it will start to make sense. Okay, here on example B, we've got y equals cosine of 2x. And so the first thing we want to do is figure out what that amplitude is. 
and notice that the coefficient in front of cosine is a 1, and so our amplitude is going to be a 1. Next will be the vertical shift. Remember, I'm not giving you a vertical shift just yet, but how would I know if there was one? There would be something outside the parentheses here with a plus or a minus moving the function up or down. And so since you don't see anything like that, zero is the vertical shift, and so that tells me what my midline is. It happens at y equals to zero. With the amplitude being one, that means the distance from zero to my max needs to be one, and so therefore this is gonna be positive one, and my distance from the midline to the minimum has also got to be one, which means that that is going to be negative one. Okay, next is the period. Remember that the period is two pi divided by b, where b is the coefficient in front of x. And so this time, I see that the coefficient in front of x is a two, and two pi divided by two is going to simplify to pi. Now, the only reason that's helpful, again, is to find the x increment. And so for the x increment, we're going to take the period, we're going to divide it by 4, and so that's just going to be pi divided by 4. And then finally, the phase shift. And so notice inside the parentheses, that's where we'll find our phase shift, there is no plus or minus after this 2x. And therefore, my phase shift and therefore my starting x value I know is going to be at 0. Okay, once I have my starting x value, my phase shift, I'm going to use my x increment to start counting on the x-axis by adding until I get 5 points. And so 0 plus pi over 4 is going to be pi over 4. Pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is 2 pi over 4, which will reduce to pi over 2. But remember, this is 2 pi over 4. So when I take 2 pi over 4 and add another 1 pi over 4. That's going to get me to 3 pi divided by 4. And then finally, the last of my 5 points will be 4 pi over 4, which will reduce to pi. Now, some of you might be noticing that that last x value has been the period on each of the first two examples. That is not always going to be the case, especially when we have a phase shift that is not equal to zero. So please don't get into the habit of thinking that the less, last x value is always equal to the period. That is a coincidence right now because we are not talking about phase shift just yet. Okay, and so now I look back to my function and notice that I am graphing a cosine function which begins at a maximum. And so at my first x value, I'm gonna graph a max, and then a zero, and then a minimum, and then a zero, and then finally another max. And I'm usually a little bit better at drawing cosine functions than I am sine functions. And so that right there is a pretty good effort. Okay, here on example C, first thing we wanna do as always is figure out what that amplitude is. And so the coefficient in front of cosine is gonna tell me what that amplitude is. Notice that it's negative one, but remember that amplitude is always positive. And so I'm gonna put here positive one as my amplitude. But that negative is gonna be important at the end because it's going to slightly change my order of points because all the maximums are gonna become minimums and all of the minimums are going to become maximum. So I'm just going to illustrate that by writing their max and min with a little two-sided arrow, meaning they're going to switch places. Okay, vertical shift would be if there is a plus or a minus at the end of the function out here outside the parentheses. We don't see that, so the vertical shift is zero, and that tells me what my midline is, y equals to zero. And therefore, because I have an amplitude of one, I know the distance from the midpoint to the maximum needs to be one, and from the midpoint to the minimum also needs to be one. Okay, for the period, we know that this is two pi divided by b, where b is the coefficient in front of x. But if you're not careful, you won't identify that coefficient correctly. x over two, would you agree with me, is the same thing as one half x and so therefore this becomes 2 pi divided by 1 half and whenever I divide by a fraction I just multiply by the reciprocal and so 2 pi times 2 over 1 
becomes a period of 4 pi. Once again, the only reason that's real helpful is so that I can find the x increment, which is period divided by 4. And so here this will reduce to pi. And then finally, the phase shift is going to tell me where to begin graphing on the x axis. And so since you don't see any plus or minus inside the parentheses here, there is no phase shift, which means you're going to start on the x axis at zero and start counting by your x increment, which is pi. And so zero plus pi is pi, plus another pi would be two pi, plus another pi would be three pi. You can see this is our easiest one so far. And then plus another pi would be four pi. And make sure always that you have five x values on your graph. When I'm grading this, I'm looking for five correct x coordinates two or three correct y coordinates and that you have the correct order of points on your graph and so speaking of order of points that's where we are in this process we are graphing a negative cosine function and remember that cosine functions normally begin at a maximum that means a negative cosine function will start at a minimum at negative one then go to pi, that's gonna be a zero. At two pi, we're gonna have a max. At three pi, another zero. And then finally, at four pi, we'll have another minimum. And so we'll have a graph that looks something like this. And I do believe that that is my best effort of the day so far. Okay, last of our preliminary examples. And so let's take a look at this, y equals three sine of two x. And so we know by now that the amplitude is that coefficient in front of sine, which is three. And the vertical shift would be if we have any plus or minus a constant at the end of the function, which we do not. So the vertical shift and therefore the midline of my graph is at y equals to zero. The period is going to be, whoops, sorry, the period is going to be uh, two pi divided by b. So in this case, two pi divided by two, which is that coefficient in front of x. And so that will reduce to pi. The reason that's helpful is so that I can find the x increment, which will be pi divided by four. And then finally, we have a phase shift to look for and notice that there is no plus or minus inside the parentheses here after the 2x. And so therefore the phase shift is zero, which means that the starting x value is zero. And let's go ahead and get our y axis labeled here as well. If my amplitude is three and my midline is zero, that means I'm gonna have to have y values at three and at negative three. Now counting by the x increment is how we're going to get our remaining four points. And so starting at zero, plus pi over four is gonna be one pi over four, and then two pi over four, which will reduce to pi over two, then three pi over four, and finally four pi over four, which will reduce to pi. Okay, now that we've got everything labeled, we are ready to look back and notice that this is a sine function, which begins at the midline, at a zero in this case, and then goes to a maximum, another zero, a minimum at three pi over four, and then finally ends at a zero. And so the graph will curve up to that maximum, back down through that zero to that minimum, and then back up to that zero. Okay, here on example two, I'm gonna give you some information about a cosine function, and then ask you to write the function. And so if the amplitude is five, I know that that goes into the front of the cosine, it is the leading coefficient of the function, if you will. It acts as the vertical stretch in the front of the function. So we're gonna have five cosine. Now, the next thing that we're going to have is bx, but this is not b. I'm gonna circle it and then write that down. That is not b. What it is, is p as in period. And so how do I find B as in boy from the P as in period, well, I have a formula for that. So P is equal to two pi over B. I'm gonna substitute in that period, pi over three is equal to two pi over B and then cross multiply. So pi times B 
is going to equal to 2 pi times 3, which is going to be 6 pi. And then divide both sides by pi so that you get b is equal to 6. And so here on the inside of the parentheses, we're going to have 6x. Now this said to write a cosine function with those two things. There's actually two of them. There is a positive one and a negative one. And so if the problem said to write two cosine functions that had an amplitude of five and a period of pi over three, all you'd have to do is put a plus or minus in front of that amplitude. Okay, here in example three, I've given you a graph of a sine or a cosine function and ask you to write the function based on the graph. And so the first thing you really need to figure out is, is this a sine or is it a cosine? And so if you start at zero, because remember we haven't done any phase shifts yet, and so everything is starting at zero, at least for now. If you start there, notice that you've got your order of points for a sine function. So I know that this is going to be a sine function. Moreover, I know that this is going to be a positive sine function because my maximum comes uh, a quarter of the way through that period and my minimum comes three quarters of the way through that period. It's in the normal order for a sine graph. Now, what's the amplitude? Well, the amplitude is the distance from the midline, which you can clearly see here, is zero to your maximum or your minimum. So it is going to be this distance right here on the y-axis. And if this y value is one, that means that this one has got to be one half. And so that's going to be your amplitude on this particular problem. Now, the last thing we need to figure out is what B as in boy is. And so remember, we have a formula for that, that two pi over B is going to equal to my period. Well, on the last problem, I told you what the period was for free. This problem, I didn't tell you what it was for free. And so you have to remember what a period is. It is the length of one picture. And so where does this particular sine function begin and end? It starts here at zero and it ends here at eight pi. And so that is a distance of eight pi and so therefore 8 pi is the period and that's going to be plugged in for p and now i'm going to solve for b as in boy so now cross multiply you're going to get 8 pi b is equal to 2 pi and then divide both sides by 8 pi to get b by itself the pi's are going to cancel out and 2 divided by 8 will reduce to 1 fourth and so the equation for that particular graph will be one half sine of one fourth x.